Welcome everybody to CBS 8's Innovate 8 special full steam ahead and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Netta Iranpour. And I'm Eric Condrich. For the next half hour we'll show you why San Diego is at the leading edge of technology and innovation and hopefully teach you a couple of things along the way too. But first, what is STEAM? So STEAM, it stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. There are a number of STEAM programs all over. They're all designed to get kids excited about the sciences and the arts. First up, we want to introduce you to some San Diegans learning high-tech skills today to power the world of tomorrow, starting with a teenager who could be America's top young scientist. She's a bright one. CBS 8's Jeff Zevely now shows us her invention and how the scientific world is tuning in. Two San Diego sisters are proving to the world that scientific brilliance runs in the family. Every year, 3M and Discovery Education search the country for America's top young scientist. I was really surprised. 14-year-old Leanne Fan will be a freshman at Westview High. What you see here isn't just a pair of headphones. These could potentially prevent up to 60% of hearing loss. Leanne invented low-cost headphones that You're use machine learning using a Google machine learning software. and blue light therapy to detect and treat mid-air infections in children. Has anyone ever thought of this before? Oh no, this is completely new, the idea of using headphones to detect and treat mid-ear infections. Could this idea end up making you millions of dollars? You know, something I'm really hoping Leanne knew that a sick child might not want to wear this device if they weren't feeling well, so she devised a way for the children to receive treatment while listening to their favorite music. I'm really proud of her. <laughs> Leanne's big sister, Cara, Hi, my name is Cara Fan. Created nanoparticle liquid bandages to replace the use of antibiotics. America's 2019 top young scientist. And look what she did three years ago. I not only want to do what my sister did, I want to go above and beyond. 60% of hearing loss. For about $200. This is the USB camera that connects to your computer, and this is what detects your ear infection. One set of headphones could help thousands of children. Healthcare should be um, available to everyone because it's our health. It's like a matter of life and death. What would you do with $25,000? Ooh. So at first, I would put the money to patenting my headphones, and then after that, I would probably go to some sushi, and then I would save the rest for my college. Leanne hopes to attend Stanford and continue helping children around the world. It doesn't have to be thousands and thousands, but if I could just change the lives of some people, then that would make me very happy. For Innovate 8, CBS 8. Bright future ahead for her, mm -hmm. that's for sure. And next we are heading to Emerald Hills, where dozens of Girls are flying high after learning how to operate drones with laser detection. So these young aviators, they're studying to become FAA certified drone pilots. And CBS 8's Heather Hope now shows us how these high-tech lessons will prep the girls for their next project. Many of the young women here at the Elementary Institute of Science already knew about drones and some even had their drone certification. Now next they'll take their skill set to new heights by learning how drones can create 3D images. Lifting off this light detection and ranging drone. Let's go forward and backwards. Okay. Give it a shot. <laughs> okay. High school senior Cheyenne Smith was able to land the $60,000 drone on her own. But we're used to flying small DJI, so they're about this big. Um, so this was huge. <laughs> yeah. A couple dozen San Diego female high school students are in the Girls Take Flight program at the Elementary Institute of Science near Marketing Euclid. These girls are going to put in a lot of time and effort. They're here for this week, uh, spending about 30 hours being introduced to the world of drones. The girls will become FAA certified drone pilots, which will prep them for a nine month program in November, part of our genetic legacy. They will map and survey the Julian Pioneer Cemetery with drones. There's some confusion in terms of the location of where some of those who are interred there. So we're going to be hoping to use the LIDAR and other geospatial equipment to recover those locations. They'll also create a virtual memorial of the Harrison Serenity Ranch, 67 acres of the former home of Nate Harrison, San Diego County's first black homesteader. How many of you guys 
need three-dimensional models of a building. All right, we got a place to start here. <laughs> Dan Hubert, the CEO of MODIS, or Mapping Operations Data Unmanned Solutions, is the program's drone instructor. Now we're going to do this in San Diego here, where we're able to do full restoration of the buildings and potentially archaeological sites under the vegetation. The girls will also learn from female aerospace engineers of color. We are creating the next emerging technology leaders. Cheyenne says her drone knowledge has been life-changing. I think that we're always pushed to become lawyers or doctors, which is great, but I think I like that they expose us to different career paths. Heather Hope, CBS 8. Those drones are tough to pilot, right? They are. I mean, the coordination yeah. it takes, it's a lot of work. It's a talented group. <laughs> you know, when you hop into a boat to take a cruise around, say, Mission Bay, you expect it to stay afloat, right? You would hope so. But what if you were given the challenge to build a boat with something that you'd rather build a house with? CBS 8's Tim Blodgett now has this story from Mission Bay. You wouldn't think that concrete is the best material to float a boat, but engineering students from California and beyond will try to make it happen. USA! USA! If you didn't know any better, you'd probably think there was a full-blown regatta happening in Dianza Cove on Mission Bay this morning. Yeah! Students from 14 colleges and universities from Southern California and Hawaii screaming on their canoers as they paddle through the course in a race against the clock. Oh, oh, easy. But instead of canoes made of aluminum, fiberglass, or really anything that might make them faster, these boats are made with something that famously sinks. When people hear about this club initially, like concrete canoe, they're like, concrete can like float? Yeah. Like, that's crazy. But it's the job of Hoist and Tran, Jessica Lopez, and their team at the UCSD School of Engineering to make a 20-foot reinforced concrete canoe that can support the weight of four people and also row it to victory against the other schools. First, we have to start with the whole design, making the shape of the canoe. Of course, there's many things that can go wrong. And of course, many things do. Not only is a rigid 300 plus pound cement boat prone to cracking, but it's also very hard to row, which is why problem solving and careful engineering is the name of the game. Working with um, teams, working with project deadlines, project goals, you're giving a set of directions and restraints. Raymond Chu is the student coordinator for the Pacific Southwest Symposium, a weekend-long conference with lectures and competitions put on by the American Society of Civil Engineers. It's the first one since COVID, and UCSD is the host this year. It is just very nice to have people coming out. I know over the last two years, a lot of us has felt disconnected with school, with our classmates, and with the college experience because we've been either like remote all the time or partially. Oh, oh, oh. While designing the fastest concrete canoe might not be the most practical use of engineering talents, the team building, designing, and problem solving skills involved definitely have real world applications. It's also a chance for some school spirit. If that floats your boat. Tim Blodgett, CBS 8. And all this time, I thought concrete would sink. <laughs> right? That's innovation <laughs> yeah, for sure. They certainly figured out a way. So coming up here, Jeff is back with a look from behind the wheel. Plus, how a local university and the San Diego Library are inspiring the next generation of young scientists. Millions of high-paying jobs that require a STEM education go unfilled in the United States every year. While those are usually high-paying positions, they do require a lot of training. Jeff Zevely is in Spring Valley now where he is introducing us to the right women for the job. Behind me, a 14-year-old is learning how to drive and so much more. How fast are you driving? 60 miles per hour. Sonia is a 10th grader at Canyon Crest Academy. <laughs> it's my first time really driving. Um, it's preparing me for the real world. She's crashing her way down an Italian road. Whoa! <laughs> Learning how to drive a gutted sports car transformed into a driving simulator. Please tell me you didn't destroy this beautiful BMW. No, we didn't destroy it. We made her better. Loxley Brown is the founder of Athena <laughs> Racing, a nonprofit that prepares girls ages 11 to 18 for careers in engineering, designers, fabricators, mechanics, businesswomen, marketers. You would expect to see an engine in here, but we have taken out the engine, the transmission. Sonia is just one of 800 girls Loxley has trained to take on an industry dominated by men. She's the best. 
I feel like she's my backbone. Like, anything I tell her, she'll support me with it. This is where the... We first profiled is. Athena Racing in 2019, but during the pandemic... My name is Tegan Hammond. I am a stunt driver. The program had to shift gears to offer online fab camps. During the last fab camp, the girls cobbled together this contraption out of a BMX bike, a tractor seat, and a lawnmower engine. And if this looks like fun, Loxley wants to teach you how to build a drifting trike too. <laughs> if only we had a future Hall of Fame NASCAR driver at the wheel. Jimmy Johnson, our hometown hero, is stepping up being the awesome girl dad that he is, and he is supporting us. Loxley says she won't quit until she sees girls walking on Mars. Why do you care so much? Because these little girls are incredible. I am so proud of them, and they work so hard. They just need somebody to be there behind them and support them. Oh my God, now I'm turning up. <laughs> okay, girls, who's gonna be a CEO at this table? Come on, yeah. show us that muscle. And I just watch them grow and become more confident, and it makes my heart just burst. Loxley named her nonprofit after a Greek goddess on purpose. Athena is the Greek goddess of wisdom, strategy, and courage. All qualities Sonia will use against the boys. This is a race. As she speeds down the highway of success. I can do anything you do but better. <laughs> I'm confident about that. For Innovate 8, Jeff Sevely, CBS 8. Yeah, they are all versions of Athena right there. Going after that need for speed. <laughs> right. <laughs> Athena Racing, by the way, looking for corporate partners and new students to grow that program. We have all the information you need at CBS8.com. Just click on the help button. You know, the best way for kids to learn is by doing. And now there's a local program putting build-it-yourself projects into the hands of kids all over San Diego. CBS 8's Tim Blodgett shows us how it works. The world needs more curious people. The way I wired it is red here and red here. And you never know what spark will light the fascination in a young mind, even when there are setbacks. Anything from making stuff and make building stuff to coding stuff. I did a couple of tries. Okay, if I made a failure, I get so down. But this time it's not. When fourth grader Shungo Yoshinaga and his mom pick up a brand new project in a box from their local library, he never knows what he's going to get. Maybe he'll build a candy sorter, a magic gate cube, or a friendly robot. Since 2016, Project in a Box, a program from UCSD and the San Diego Public Library that encourages kids of all ages to get interested in the world of STEM. That's science, technology, engineering, and math. Every project comes with every piece the kid will need. This week, they'll build a bit of box, a flashing cube that requires kids to learn basic circuitry. We're gonna wire some RGB lights. So all you need is... And of course, there's always a helpful UCSD engineering student there to help them along. What I like to do is that... Trevor Oshiro walked a handful of kids into building their box. So if your kid wants a hands-on lesson in engineering, it's not hard to sign up. Best of all, it's free. Just become a member at PIBUCSD.org. Who knows, maybe you'll see the same spark in your child that Oshiro got when he was just a kid. Actually, like seeing them get interested and excited for what we do is what keeps me going. Tim Blodgett, CBS 8. We can really sense that excitement. That's pretty neat yeah. to see. An Apple software engineer joins us in studio to share how he is inspiring young San Diegans with high-tech projects and how you can get involved. That's all coming up. Plus, we're going to introduce you to the mom turned seamstress after she couldn't find the science-themed clothes her daughter was looking for. That's next. And welcome back here. A mom in Washington, D.C., who wants more science-related clothes for little girls, decided to take charge and design the outfits herself. She is now making dresses featuring rockets, planets, and dinosaurs. Our Heather Hope shares her story. This mom turned CEO launched her clothing company when she says her daughter, who wants to become an astronaut, couldn't find any rocket scientist clothing for little girls. Everything is STEM-themed. Like, this is my rocket science skirt. 
taking ordinary cotton and canvas fabrics and putting them on extraordinary science-based designs. Savaha USA Clothing Company was born. CEO Jaya Iyer started creating STEAM-themed or science, tech, engineering, arts, and math clothing in 2015 when she noticed there weren't any aeroscience options for little girls like her daughter, who she named the company Savaha after. She's the one who inspired me to start this company. But it also means uh, so be it. I feel like it almost goes well with what my company stands for that, okay, we, you know, if there is something that's missing in the market, we are bringing it and that's how it's going to be. Putting her PhD in fashion merchandising to work, Jaya creates children's clothing with dinosaurs, constellation and the periodic table of elements, which has been a great conversation starter for the playground. Most people would ask, hey, who's your favorite Disney princess or, you know, things like that. They started asking, oh, so what do you love about science? She says sales for the science centered clothes skyrocketed that she expanded the line to adults. I got so much of a demand from adults uh, that I have started making adults clothing. That's actually a bigger part of my business now. Her biggest customers are school teachers who love that all the dresses are made with pockets. It has pockets. Oh my God, the dress has pockets. <laughs> it has pockets. Jaya's even designing dresses based on NASA's new James Webb Space Telescope. I'm actually creating a dress uh, based on uh, that image right now. Growing her company to creating handbags, polo shirts, pajamas, hoodies and scarves, Jaya hopes her clothing breaks gender stereotypes in any industry. They are feminine women and yet they can be really good in STEM fields. Heather Hope, CBS 8. I call dibs on the constellation one. I <laughs> love that. that. I would wear stars anywhere. <laughs> really creative. Well, parents can relate to this one. We're always looking for ways to keep our kids busy. And summer breaks, along with the holiday breaks, don't make that any easier. Now, lucky for us, San Diego is a technology hotspot with opportunities for young minds all year round. Our Marcella Lee introduces us to a local educator who's inspiring young San Diegans to think like scientists. engineer and educator Dr. Corey Sewell with Hands-On Tech Education. He's here to tell us about their STEAM summer programs. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Sewell. Thanks for having me. So you have a 14-year-old son, a 9-year-old daughter. You know that the kids need to stay sharp. They can do that summer slide. Oh, what yes. kind of activities are you, are you offering for kids here in San Diego? Oh, wow. We have a lot of amazing opportunities. Um, we call them tech adventure camps. So what we do is we get kids in activities that they naturally enjoy, virtual reality. Yes. game design, um, esports, um, artificial intelligence, sustainable agriculture. The list goes on and on. What we want to have them do is have something that they really, really enjoy, get them engaged, and then build back in those STEAM fundamentals, those coding, those robotics, those electrical engineering. So that's the plan. Get them excited about the end result and then kind of break it apart and show them how we got to that point. Exactly, exactly. So our theme, and our, our kind of passion is exposure, not exhaustion. So we're not going to, in a week, turn somebody into this astrophysicist. But you can have fun, you can learn something new, and with that passion, you'll go on go and, and keep going further. I love the photos that you shared with us because in every one of them, the kids are smiling. They're excited to learn mm -hmm. about science and math. And really, the real-world application is where you're going to get those kids interested. You, I went to the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Oh, you got your master's and your doctorate there. Yes. Uh, bringing all of this and what you learned back to the, to the next generation mm -hmm. and having young kids yourself, is that what inspires you? Oh yes, that's my passion. That's kind of why I get up in the morning. That's, that's what I really want to do is have something that's impactful to the community. So, hey, yes, we do things. I'm an engineer. I, pr I provide the community, but it's better if our kids learn more. If they use that for good and use that to kind of empower their own communities, that's what we do here. I love it. All right, we've got a little graphic here to show people uh, where they can turn to learn about your hands-on technology education summer camps or get more information. Just head to CBS8.com, click on the help button. We've put all the information there. Thanks, Dr. Sewell. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And for some, getting kids pumped about learning can be difficult, but one WNBA player is up for the challenge. How she's scoring points for both education and tomorrow's workforce when we come back. Welcome back to CBS 8's Innovate 8 special. Full steam ahead, I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Netta E. Romport. Next, we are heading to New York, where professional basketball player Nisha Butler taking her talents from the court to the classroom. Astrid Martinez shows us how Butler is now scoring points for kids, teaching them the skills for some of the nation's most important jobs. 
Nisha Butler is blazing a trail, bringing a bit of Silicon Valley to Brooklyn. Let's run your program and see if you get it right. Butler opened the Steam Champs Education Center in July. That STEM with an extra A for arts, teaching skills from computer coding to robotics to chess. We are a science, technology, engineering, arts, and math center. We wanted to include art. A lot of times the kids are on the computer a lot and they don't have a lot of um, unplugged activities. For this native New Yorker, it's another pivot in an already impressive career that began at the basketball court at Georgia Tech and then the WNBA's New York Liberty. But the STEM seed was planted when she was 12 and took her first computer science class. I really look back to that um, time because that set the foundation that gave me the confidence, that gave me the skill. It was a year-long class. Um, and I realized I was only female in that class. Um, and of, of course, the only person of color in that class. A poll released last year found black people account for just 9% of the STEM workforce, a statistic Butler wants to change. Seven-year-old Theodore Van is one of her students, though a STEM job is just one of his career goals. I want to be a basketball player, soccer player, tennis player, and I want to be a scientist a pizza chef and I want to go up to space. Did you imagine this would be your afterlife after basketball? You know what? No, <laughs> I didn't. I'm actually having a purpose to make a difference in these kids' lives. A difference that could open young minds to new possibilities and build a pathway to success. Astrid Martinez, CBS News, Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, what an incredible role model she is, too. A <laughs> second career for her, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, we want to thank you so much for joining us for our Innovate 8 Full Steam Ahead special. If you'd like to take a closer look at any of the stories we've covered throughout the show and to see all of our Innovate 8 coverage, head to CBS8.com. And don't forget, we need your help. If there are any Steam stories you want us to highlight, reach out and let us know. Yeah, you may see it on the news. You can also stay connected with CBS 8 on all of our social media pages and on the CBS 8 app. We will see you next time.